get asked one question quite a lot and as we get closer and closer to this election I'm sure I'll be getting asked it quite a bit more. Tia, how did you move to Europe? I first made the decision to move to Italy about two, two and a half years ago. I had studied Italian in high school, I did a foreign exchange in Italy and I decided that I really liked the country and the people. I said to myself, whoa, I would love to live there. I submitted an application to a school that I researched and liked, got accepted and got offered a scholarship. That was what opened the door for me to move to Italy. If you want to move to another country, you have to find a motive and the easiest one I think is study. Coming directly out of high school, there were certain stipulations that I had to fulfill in order to be able to attend this school. In America, we have four years of high school. In Italy, they have five. So I had to do a lot of extra work my senior year in order to catch up to the Italian students and have my high school diploma be seen as valid. The standards are different for every state. The consulate of New York may ask something different than the consulate in Wisconsin. I don't know. You have to look up your consulate and see what standards, what AP classes, what um, type of extra work you have to do to catch up to the Italian students. In my case, Bocconi was asking a lot more than the Italian consulate. So when I did everything that I needed to do for Bocconi, it was pretty much all set for the Italian consulate. Find a school that you like, apply to it, fulfill the requirements, and then start the wonderful visa process. In order to live in Italy for longer than a period of three months or 90 days, Americans need to get a visa. I just want to give the preface that although I'm talking specifically about my experience with Italy, most of the things that I'm saying are going to be the same for the other Schengen region countries, Germany, France. These countries form what is called the Schengen area and the Schengen area is basically for travel and immigration purposes. So all of the rules for all of these different countries are pretty much the same, but I'm just talking in specific for Italy. The first thing that I needed to do was to get a visa to enter Italy. For the student visa, it was pretty straightforward. Basically, you needed to have a dichiarazione di valore for your um, high school diploma, which basically just says they'll give you a document that says that you have reached the equivalent to the Italian maturità and you can study in Italy. You are going to need an acceptance letter from the school that you got in to prove that you actually got into a school in Italy. You're going to need to have health insurance. Um, when I was applying, I couldn't get health insurance from Italian health insurance from America. So what I had to do was I had to sign an affidavit. My mom had to sign it, I think, saying that we would get health insurance as soon as I got into Italy. I don't know if it's the same. I did the visa process two years ago, so some things might be different. You need to prove that you have some place to stay in Italy. So my school had given me, along with the acceptance letter, it said that there were dorms available for me to stay in. So that covered that pretty much. You need a copy of your passport. You need a copy of your student ID. Make two copies of everything, two, even three copies of everything. That's the first thing that you need to learn about the bureaucratic process and living internationally is that you're going to need millions and millions of copies of every single document. And the last and most important thing you need is proof of financial um, stability in the country. If you're going to Italy on a student visa, they pretty much expect you to not be working. You should be able to live there without working. While you can work in Italy for 20 hours a week on a student visa, more than likely you're not going to be able to find a job that's going to hire you for 20 hours a week. More than likely you won't have time to take 20 hours a week away from your studies to work. So they just want to make sure that you have enough money to actually be living in Italy and you won't be starving on the streets. Um, right now, at least for me to get my visa permessa thing renewed, the limit is 5,800 and I think 40 euros you need to have in your bank account. The American equivalent of that is, when I was doing it, I had $3,000 in my bank account and then my mom had some money in her bank account. She signed an affidavit saying she was my mom and she was financially like responsible for me, whatever. And um, also I had like all the documentation of my scholarships. I had the scholarship from Bocconi, I had another scholarship that I received from America. So by the end of it, I looked pretty financially stable. You should still be able to submit like scholarship letters as part of financial stability. But from what I last heard, you're no longer able to have a parent sign an affidavit and saying that they'll give you the money. The money has to be in your bank account. The money has to be under your name. And that's pretty much it. When you have all the documents together, you make an appointment at your Italian consulate. Mine was in New York. It's a kind of a sketchy process because 
For example, I couldn't bring my mom and my grandma into the, the visa place. Like they had to literally wait outside of the consulate. They couldn't even enter. I don't know if that's like normal for all consulates, but that's what happened to me in Italy, at the Italian one. And my first memory of the Italian consulate was the elevator because it was this elevator that I had never seen before. You had to open the door, walk in. It was like a little room. Then you close the door again and you get in and you use that elevator. It was the weirdest thing to me, only to come to Italy and you find that 75% of the elevators are just like that one in the Italian consulate. I don't know, I thought it was funny. I actually ended up going to the Italian consulate two times for my visa because they sent me home the first time. The first time they sent me home because I didn't have a dichiarezione di valore for my, um, it's my American high school diploma. At the time, I didn't know I needed one because Bocconi said you probably wouldn't, whatever. So I had to go back to my, go back home to Connecticut and convince my high school to give me my high school diploma early. Um, let, they actually let me borrow it. It was, if I wasn't as good of a student, I don't know if they would have still let just anybody do that. So they gave me my high school diploma. I had to get, um, a legalized copy of it. This is another term that you're gonna get used to. You have to get things legalized. Legalized is when you go to a notary and you they give you like a special stamp that says that this document is real and you're gonna have to do that a lot. And it's expensive. It's like $40 a stamp, so plan accordingly. Um, yeah, so I had to get my high school diploma, translate it in Italian, and then get the um, English copy and the Italian copy notarized, legalized by the notary for 40 something dollars. Bring that back back to the Italian uh, consulate, get my dichiarezione di valore, and then go downstairs for my uh, visa interview. And the visa interview was pretty um, easy. It was, I was so nervous, especially after being turned away once, I was so scared. But in the end, they just asked me a couple of questions. Where was I gonna be going to school? Where I was gonna be living? Stuff like that. Took my fingerprints, I believe. Took my passport. <laughs> And then I think it was two days later, they mailed me back my passport with my new Italian visa in it. And so I officially had an Italian visa to go to Italy. Make sure that you also give all the documentation to your school that you need. I had to give a lot of documentation to Bocconi for, um, to tell them about my financial situation, my family situation. That was the only way I could get the scholarship. Everything had to be notarized, legalized, and mailed off to Italy. In the end, I ended up spending like, 120 to 200 dollars in getting documents freaking stamped you guys it was such a stressful stressful period from may when i started the the um visa process to july when i actually got the visa in my hand it was so stressful but i just gotta let you guys know even though it feels like it's like everything is so hard and so difficult and you're not gonna get the visa you're probably gonna get the visa and when you do everything will be awesome and you'll live in Italy or France or Germany or wherever you're living and you'll be so happy you did it. Fast forward to September, I moved to Italy and Italy, Italy is not like America. In America, when you get your student visa, you're pretty much set, have your student visa. It lasts usually your, the duration of your studies, I believe. I don't think you have to get a student visa renewed every year. Well, in Italy, the visa is only good enough for getting into the country. To actually stay in the country, you need to get a whole other document called the Permesso di Sojourno, and it's like the permit of stay. And basically, I mean, you're gonna give them pretty much the same documentation that you gave the embassy. The embassy make, takes a bunch of copies of the documents you gave them, they put it in a little packet, they stamp it with the Italian embassy stamp, and they give it back to you and tell you to give it to the permesso. And that will be everything you need to give to the permesso. So basically what you need to do is you need to go to the post office and get a yellow kit that is for immigration and the permesso di sojourno you're going to need to fill out modulo uno i believe um for student the student permesso permit of stay for the reasons of study you fill it out it's all in italian but um when i go back to italy and i do my renewal process i'm good i think i'm going to make a, a video about it so when i do that video i'll show you guys how to fill out the permesso application but you fill it out um it's pretty straightforward you buy health insurance when you're in italy there are three different types well, two really. One type is just for emergencies, which is the one I always got, and it's about 100 euros a year and 68 euros for half a year. So if you're only studying for a semester, you're gonna get that one. If you're studying for a full year, you get the 98 euro one. This year, I'm gonna try to get the 150 euro one, which is, it basically subscribes you to the, it's the National Italian um, Health insurance and you'll get like a little card the carta di sanitaria that all the italians have and you'll be able to make like appointments and do everything that italians can do with the health service 
that one is 150 euros so you get that you fill out the application you pay for the application you get us you have to buy a stamp at the tabaki not at the post office it's called a marco di volo i think and it's 16 euros and then you're going to take that also to the post office where you also hand in your application and your health insurance um you give them everything the people at the post office are going to like verify the information type it up into a computer put your marco di bolo stamp on your immigration um packet they take your immigration packet they send it to some far away office in some far away place in italy where they're going to process your application and they also give you a um an appointment to go to the local questura because you have to go to the questura to get the actual permits of stay card the appointment can be anywhere from the next week to the next month september to october are really busy months because everybody is doing like the student permits of stays so appointments will be hard to come by but you get your appointment you go so going to the questura is pretty much the questura going to the questura is pretty much the last hurdle that you have to pass in getting into italy legally um basically you go to the appointment you wait for somebody to call you into a room you guys i've been to two different questuras the in the past two years that i've done my permesso and at both of those questuras nobody spoke english and like my italian was really terrible the first time i was kind of shocked that they didn't speak english in an immigration office but whatever you just stumble your way through it um they just ask you the questions to, to verify the information you submitted you say see <laughs> see and then they're going to give take your fingerprints go home again and then you come back like a week or so later to pick up the actual permesso and then you're good for a year and the next year you have to do it all over again not the visa part thankfully but you have to do the whole permesso thing every year that's the bureaucratic process the immigration process all wrapped up in a nutshell this process will take months i started the process in may of 2014 and i finished it somewhere around october in 2014 when i finally got the permit of state in my hand and then the next year september i had to do it all over again so and when i go back to italy in two weeks i have to do it all over again that's the pretty much the hardest part once you get to italy things get, are pretty easy from there like i said english tutoring jobs are pretty easy to find and if you want to find housing if you're not living in a student housing i can leave some links down below to some websites like immobilare.it everything else you just kind of learn as you go that's how i literally like got to move to italy and how the process went if anybody has any questions be sure to leave them down in the comment section i hope that you guys found this video useful like and subscribe as always and i will see you guys in my next one Mwah.